How's it going everyone? Today I want to walk you through how I use Cursor in my daily game dev work with Unity for faster AI coding. If you're used to copying and pasting out of ChatGPT, this is going to be very exciting. Cursor is a fantastic IDE and I find it to be a huge source of speed and leverage as a solo dev. Before we begin, if you have not already connected Cursor to Unity, please see my other tutorial in the description below for a very fast guide on getting the two programs to talk to each other. This tutorial on actually using Cursor will be ordered from simplest to more advanced, and I've added proper time splits so you can jump around to see what you find useful if so desired. Alright, so assuming you've properly set up Unity and Cursor, how do you get started with AI assisted development? Right off the bat, one of the most simplest ways you can use Cursor is just as you're text editing as you normally would, you can see it's kind of front running what changes you might want to make. If you ever used Copilot, this will be familiar. If, uh, if you like what it's previewing, go ahead and press tab and that'll auto complete it. And you can see it actually went ahead and did another one and you just press tab again and you come down here and press tab and tab. And uh, it's not always gonna be useful. Sometimes it thinks you're going in a direction you're not going, but at the same time, sometimes it knows exactly what you might wanna do next and uh, pressing tab to auto complete that is super useful and uh, helps you go faster. Using tab autocomplete is just scratching the surface though, so to get a little bit more advanced, it's as easy as control I on Windows or command I on Mac, which gets you into composer mode. Composer mode is for making changes within your project. You can type in questions right there and hit enter and get a response. Currently you can see that test.cs, the class I'm currently in, is linked, but we can link other things using the at operator. The add operator lets you pick which context you want to add. For example, we can click into files and pick a different file and then press enter. And you can now see that the composer mode is linking to both test.cs and carddisplay.cs. For now, I'll go ahead and remove carddisplay.cs. You can also select a block of code and then by hitting uh, control I, you can bring that specific block of code into the context window of the AI as well. The AI only knows what you tell it, and by linking to various pieces of information or code with the at symbol or having the code directly in the window, you are feeding the AI exactly what you want it to know for what you're about to work on. As you begin to use cursor in larger projects, the ability to keep it laser focused on specific pieces of code is super helpful, especially if you want to make changes across multiple files. Alright, so let's type something in here that we want the AI to help us with, say a simple color shifter for our sprite renderer in this class. AI models already have pretty good Unity knowledge baked in, so just using Unity or Game Object in your prompt will allow you to be able to see good results from the AI. It understands Unity Game Objects pretty well, although if you're working with something like sprites versus images or something more nuanced, make sure to be very clear in your prompt about what you want it to do. Once you press enter in the chat box, the AI will spit out what it thinks is the correct way to approach what you asked, and you can choose whether to accept or reject this code. You can accept with control enter, or you can reject with control backspace, or you can press one of the buttons either here, 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 or here. For now, we'll go ahead and accept this code. You'll notice that when we accepted this code, it was weaving the changes into your existing code. It's more nuanced than just a simple copy and paste. You can also choose to reject the change or iterate on the change. So here, if maybe we want to say only stay in blue, red, and yellow and use a random delay, not linear, and we go ahead and hit enter again, the AI goes ahead and weaves in those changes again, and we can hit control enter or control backspace if we wanted to accept or reject. Again, we'll go ahead and accept. So that's one way to work with AI in cursor, the composer mode. That was one way to work with AI in cursor, the composer mode. The second way is to select a block of text and hit control K or command K. Here you can see that we've opened up a smaller prompt within the file where you can ask it to do something right on the code you've selected and it won't give you any extra feedback or questions. It'll just do whatever you're asking. I would generally use this only for small fast changes. I know the AI will get right and don't want to talk about. So we can say something like add purple, hit enter. It'll make the change, and then there is an option for follow-up instructions, so we could say add, uh, let's see, we already have orange and purple, add pink, and then we can hit control enter or control backspace to accept or reject. The third way is less powerful, but still useful. Control L or command L on Mac will open up the chat mode. This mode is specifically for talking with your code, not necessarily for making changes the way composer mode is. So here we could say, what does this do? 
And you can see we're linking currently to test CS, so it knows the context. And it's going to explain a little about it. Now, you can have the AI make changes in chat mode, but the way it applies the changes is a little bit slower compared to composer mode. So generally, I would think of them as two paradigms. Composer mode is for making changes. Chat mode is for asking questions. All right, going back into composer mode, we'll press the plus button right here to create a new chat. And earlier, I mentioned that we can manually link to specific context. But in composer mode, the cursor system will also try to find context for you. So I'm going to go ahead and remove test.cs to link to nothing here. And I'm going to say what code handles diplomacy. So you'll see I'm linking to nothing. Hit enter. You can see 25 results for search code base. And the code handling diplomacy is located in the diplomacy directory with the diplomacy handler. And you can see all the files it's listing out there. So that's a really nice way. If you're working in a large code base, you don't want to go find the specific context. Or maybe you just want to get a quick refresher on your own code base of what's doing what. You can just ask in composer mode and it'll go out and try to locate to the best of its ability which files you're going to want to use. This would also work for editing. So if you were to have asked it to say change something about diplomacy, it will go in and try to find the classes it's trying to uh, make changes within and make those changes in whatever classes it sees fit. The AI generally understands Unity as a whole fairly well. That's baked into the base knowledge because Unity is popular enough. But if you are using something that's less popular, let's say a specific plugin. Here I have a graph and chart. Here I have graph and chart. The AI will likely not understand the specific nuances of something smaller. So what you want to do in that situation is go find the documentation for whatever you're using. Go ahead and copy the parent URL for that documentation. And then heading back into cursor, we want to go to file, preferences, cursor settings, features. And then you want to scroll down to docs. So right here, we're going to go ahead and add a new doc. Here, it wants you to paste in the URL. So we just copied that. There we go, graph and chart, hit enter. And here you can give it a name. Um, I'll just call it graph and chart. And hit confirm. Uh, I already have a graph and chart in here. It would let you do this, though. All right, and then once it uh, pops in the docs, it'll say indexed with this little green. If it weren't to say that, you'd want to go ahead and hit this uh, re-index button to go ahead and refire that. But once you have the green dot next to the, the documentation you want to link to, you can now use it in cursor. So if we go back here, create a new uh, composer mode, and hit at, we can go down to where it says docs, hit enter. And now we can go to graph and chart. So you can now see it's saying at graph and chart. And you'll notice right here, it's actually going out and fetching a bunch of those web pages within the graph and chart documentation. If we were to say make a pie chart, again, with at graph and chart linked, the AI will now correctly use the code that we want it to use for that specific plugin. It's kind of being inserted right into what the, the AI is about to do, what specifically you want it to learn. All right, so that's how to work with uh, smaller plugins in Cursor. And finally, we'll go over some of the models. So right now you can see I'm using GPT-40. If you click on this little drop down right here, it'll show you some of the different models that Cursor has preloaded in it. If you want to make a change to those, you go to File, Preferences, Cursor Settings, Models. Here you can see all the different models you can choose from. Uh, whatever you check mark here will be shown to you in the drop down over there. And uh, here you can actually toggle on and off your own API keys. So if you go and get an API key from Anthropic or OpenAI or Google, you can enable that here. And then you'd be able to use your own uh, API key at cost rather than using cursor. I do pay for a cursor subscription, so I'm just going to leave that off. Generally, I found pretty good results with uh, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, but it's up to you. You can kind of experiment and see which ones you prefer. And that covers my workflow with cursor and Unity. If you're interested in more AI coding tutorials or want to follow along as I work on my grand strategy economy game Orbit Economica, feel free to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.